So our topic today is hash functions. And these go by quite a few different names. The actual specific Java method is called hash code. You've heard them as hash functions. Sometimes they're referred to as a digest. You'll see that term. Uh, sometimes you'll just prefer, hear them referred to as hashes. Um, so what is a hash and what are the properties that are important for us? Um, so a hash, you know, um, it took me a while to realize that, that, that I don't know if this is intentional, but a hash actually sort of shares a name with a particular uh, breakfast meal. And maybe I can pull up uh, a, a picture of this just to, just to show you uh, what it looks like. So like here is, you know, a picture of a hash. Um, and the idea with the, with the breakfast hash is it's got a bunch of stuff kind of like all chopped up, all mixed together. Um, and in a certain way, a hash code is sort of similar. Uh, but there's a couple of important uh, properties of it. So uh, hash code allows us to take an arbitrarily large value. Uh, we're going to see some examples today where we take strings, but you can also take entire Java objects. You can take huge files that you downloaded off the internet. You can take massive corpuses of text, whatever you want. You could take that like the entire course catalog for the University of Illinois that we've been working with. Um, and what it does is the hash value reduces that to a fixed size value. So you see the Wikipedia definition says a hash function is any function that can be used to map data of arbitrary size to fixed size values. So arbitrary size data, like an entire movie file, fixed size value. And the size varies depending on the type of hash function that you're using or the type of hash code that you're producing. Um, but all hash codes produce fixed size output regardless of the size of the input. Okay. So that's one of the important properties. You want fixed size output. The other important property is, well, you might be thinking, ah, oh, I can make a hash function really easy. You just give me anything and I give you zero, right? Um, so there's two other important properties. Uh, one of them is that the hash function is deterministic. Okay, so you could also say, oh, well, sorry, the hash function is uniform. Let's start with that. So if I give you a bunch of different inputs, you give me a bunch of different outputs. And the goal really is that given, you know, a bunch of different inputs, the outputs are evenly distributed across the space of outputs. So let's say my hash function produced a number between zero and 16, that wouldn't be super useful. But the idea is that, you know, 1 16th of the time I want to get zero, 1 16th of the time I want to get seven, 1 16th of the time I want to get 14, etc. cetera. Um, bigger hash uh, ranges produce the same sort of, uh, sort of a goal, um, which is that the output is evenly distributed. Okay, so now we need fixed size evenly distributed across the output space. Now you're thinking, oh, okay, well, I know how to solve this. I'll just give you a random number, right? No problem. Third property, deterministic. Same input, same output. Um, and those are really the three core properties of a hash function. So fixed size output, uh, arbitrary size input. I'll show you some examples later of uh, producing hashes for really big files or whatever. You can produce a hash for anything. Um, fixed size output. Uh, uniformly distributed across the output space, if possible, right? It's not going to be perfect, but we want that as much as we can. And then deterministic, same input, same output. Um, now, there are different types of hash functions, and we'll get into this in a little bit, depending on how they're used um, and depending on the size of the output and the application, things like that. But these are the core properties that make them useful. They allow us to convert a huge amount of data to a single output um, if that output, as that output gets bigger and bigger, uh, we'll see cases where that output essentially can be considered like a fingerprint for the input, right? Because it's actually going to be unique. We'll see how systems like Git actually rely on this. But the three core properties, fixed size output for an arbitrary size input, uniformly distributed across the output space given lots of different inputs, and, um, geez, it's late. Uniformly distributed across the output space and deterministic. Same input, same output. Got them all three. Uh, sorry for the little brain freeze.